So I would say, yeah, Ronnie, you know, I could say he's one of like my favorite characters on the show because when he comes on screen, I'm actually paying attention. Whereas when it's Lou, I don't really give a what he's doing because he's always doing something dumb anyway. All right, what's up, YouTube? Back at you with another video. So we're here with the Raising Canaan season three characters exposed, all of that. And basically, I'm gonna just talk my shit about the various characters in Raising Canaan. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna just start with, I guess, one of the main characters in Raising Canaan. And I'm gonna start with Raquel. Now, I've seen a lot of posts on Facebook and shit like that. And it always asks, like, who would you rather be your mom or some shit like that? Or like, who's a better mom, Raquel or Monet? And to be honest with you, Monet is a way better mom than Raquel, in my opinion. Like, honestly, having seen both shows, if I had to choose between the two, I'm easily going with Monet. And the thing is, I feel like they're both very manipulative. But at the same time, I draw the line at forcing somebody to be in your house against their will. Like... Kanan at this point doesn't really want much to do with with rock and the thing is I don't really remember why <laughs> So if you're watching this tell me in the comment section below like what the problem actually originally is between the two of them because I haven't seen season one or season two You know in a long time but the fact that she Sat there and hit a gun in his bag just so he can get in trouble and be forced to live with her I was like alright that's like next level you know manipulation right there just to get somebody you know to just you know like you can't force somebody to have a relationship with you like you can't force that type of shit and i think between the two of them monet is not gonna force you to fuck with her like if you tell monet like basically if drew kane or diana was like all right monet i'm not fucking with you anymore i think she would she would have a problem with it but if if you were to push back on her the same way that kanan pushes back on on rock then Monet would be like, all right, you know what, whatever. All right, fuck you then. All right, then move out. But Rock, on the other hand, she's going to sit there and really try to, to, to manipulate you. And then if you find out, she's not even going to be sorry about the shit. She's just going to be like, yeah, well, you know, whatever the fuck it is that, that Raquel be saying. So, And then also, I stopped liking her once she had that scene where she was telling Lou like i own you or some shit like that and I, I think i may have did a video talking about that before how like she looked like a black maleficent it, like she was basically looking mad scary and i i think i i vividly remember doing a video about that shit so i see patina miller just kind of always like just kind of scares me on the law i'm not even gonna front at least from that episode moving forward but yeah so but that's my that's my thing with raquel man like you just can't you can't force people you know to be in your life you can't like tell them i own you or you know stash guns in people's in people's bag and then kind of try to dictate how they live their life because you're basically setting it up for people to um resent you all that bullshit aside i think patina miller is a great actress um she does the character of raquel justice even though in real life she's like the polar opposite of that um but i think at some point Raquel is gonna die or some shit like that because <clears throat> we don't really hear uh, Kanan or Juke mention her that much if at all in the regular series of power so I think at some point she's gonna catch up to her you know what I'm saying and we all know in the drug business you never stay on the top too long like there's always somebody there to knock you off whether it's like another drug dealer or the police or some shit like that so um uh yeah so that's my thoughts on raquel uh unique so he turned out to be one of my favorite characters on the show and not necessarily wow not necessarily because he's like a great actor or anything like that but more so like he kind of he fits the environment like he he has like great energy like it's authentic the way that he plays um unique and it was a certain element of like coolness that you know joey badass brought to the show that that i liked um 
because he started out as like the main antagonist i think like in in season one and season two and then um after a while he kind of like turned out to be like a like a deuteragonist if you know what that is so it's like somebody who starts out the antagonist but then ends up being on the same page as the protagonist or protagonists um but i think his downfall ultimately was really not not seeing through ronnie you know what i'm saying like if i have a relative that you know was giving me like mean mugging me giving me attitudes all the time and constantly like getting at me for one reason or the other i'm not fucking with him so just because you my brother and you went to jail and you came out and i'm offering you this and it's not good enough for you all right well then go get that shit on your own but i'm not gonna have this man in my house you know with with my uh with, with the with the mother of my kids and shit because that's just a recipe for disaster you know so when ronnie went behind his back and went to that other guy to try to get some work and when he told him when he told him no and then when unique pressed him my thing was this when i saw that fight scene i was like yo you have to finish it you have to finish it. like somebody like ronnie is not gonna sit there and just take an ass whooping like laying down you know because unique won that fight so that just goes to show that ronnie is is beatable like you know ronnie can be beat you know but you can't show that man no mercy so when he whooped his ass and was like yeah i'm the man i'm this i'm that and ronnie came i was like i was like i was like yo finish him off i was like yo finish him off i was like shooting him because if you don't he's gonna come back either right in that moment or down the line and what's funny he did he did and he killed his own brother you know and then dumped him you know off in the woods now i know there are people that think that ronnie is still alive or some shit like that i don't know you know i wouldn't be mad if he was but if he's not it is what it is you know what i'm saying but i think that overall i think his character you know was pretty yo how do i shoot again hold on hold on hold on hold on Still got it. I don't think he really served the story like in the in the grand scheme of things. He was kind of like a character that, you know, was just like, you know what I mean? Like I I, I don't know how to I don't really know how to how to how to describe it, but basically he, he just has side character energy, and that's why I feel like it's not a big deal that you know he died because you know I mean like if he was still alive, like what would he be doing? You know, in my opinion, like, I don't know, like, how he would be serving the story at that point outside of having a little love affair with, with Raquel and shit like that. So, you know, um, but rest in peace, Unique, you know, and uh, that's my thoughts on him, I guess. Marvin. Marvin was a character that I really never, like, gave two fucks about until season three. And I think season three gave him an opportunity to really, like, spread his wings, like, in terms of, like, who he is not only like to himself but also his relationship with jukebox his relationship with lou his relationship with rock and then um his relationship with other characters you know like the npcs and shit. um one thing i really like about marvin is that he never gave up on trying to be a good father to jukebox you know what i'm saying like i like it's like he always tried even though like their relationship was always like on the wrong foot but it's like he never stopped trying and honestly that's like like the pinnacle i would say the pinnacle but that's like a good example of like how like fathers should you know strive to be in you know their what the fuck am i doing yeah hold on hold on hold on i i, en I enjoyed the fact that or i enjoyed watching marvin and jukebox kind of repair their relationship and then you know him him being somebody that you know she would like invite to things and she would start to talk to him and open up to him and then he would do the same you know because in real life it's not always like that you know for 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 parents and their kids that you know um have had trauma in their past you know parents and kids that you know have went you know through you know different things it, it's always tough to come back from from that type of from that type of thing so I just think that um, Marvin is actually one of the highlights of the show, um, even though he's probably going to go to jail soon.
Now, here's my issue, one of my issues with Marvin, right? Like, you you have to see certain shit coming from certain people. Like, there's no way that that white guy apparently was saying that, you know, he, he was trying to, um, like, get information about Jukebox and do an interview with all of that. But then every single question he's asking you is about crime. And, and criminal shit and then it's like you don't even take care of his kids so if you don't even take care of his kids then what does that say about your friendship with him you know so because Marvin's probably gonna end up in jail at some point like in power it's rare that characters get a happy ending and obviously again like Marvin is not in in jukebox's life in the in the original series of power so obviously that means something happened to him especially you know, looking at how Jukebox ended up, you know, turning out, and I'm gonna talk about her in a minute. Overall, I, I rock with Marvin, and I understand why he's constantly eating, because I'm one of them guys that's always eating all the time. You, you know what I'm saying? You gotta eat to live, so starving like Marvin. Uh, Kanan. Now, honestly, I don't really like Kanan that much and I think the only reason why I even pay attention to him on the show is because of 50 cents portrayal of the character so I'm just curious to know like how he ended up becoming the way that he did you know but the care like the actor you know himself I mean like I don't know because Kanan be on some I don't like my mother and you don't like your brother I don't like my mother and you don't like your brother. So, I, you know, I, I just, yeah, but, um, and I think part of that comes from the similarities between him and Tariq, but I think he's not as, as much of an asshole as, you know, Tariq is. Like, Kanan, you know, at this stage in his life right now, it's not like he's ruining people's lives. Like, in fact, really all Kanan's trying to do is just forge his own path and do his own thing whereas you know Tariq it's like he was kind of sort of doing the same but fucking people's lives up in the process so um but I think at this point right now Kanan is gonna have to make a choice between his family and you know the gangster family or business that he's building around himself so I think as much as he hates his mother he's gonna have to make a choice and I think at some point they're really gonna part ways because He's not gonna keep standing. Wow, are you fucking serious? Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. You know, he's not gonna keep standing for somebody else trying to dictate his life. You know, he's gonna stop giving a fuck about a lot of shit. Because you gotta keep in mind, this is the same guy that shot his own son and was like, yeah, I, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like he didn't it didn't bother him one bit that, you know, he shot his son in the head. You know, and Jukebox said the same thing. She was like, oh, so you killed Sean? Well, it doesn't matter because he wasn't loyal and he was really Ghost Son, you know. But basically, I'm only invested in this story because of how it ties in to the original power with Tommy, Ghost, Angela. That's what I really care about. I don't really care for Kanan as a young kid, as a character, because he's not he's not all that interesting, you know. And it, 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 it helps the story what helps to show that it's an ensemble cast because if we had to just rely on him to carry that show it wouldn't go very far it wouldn't go very far you know because like Omar Hardwick is a good example of a guy that can carry a show and this young Kane he can't do that he can't do that because it's just like there's not a lot of there, there's like next to no nuance to his character whatsoever and you know, that's why I'm not really, like, too... He's, he's not one of my favorite characters on the show. You know, like, Joey Badass, even though he's not really a legitimate actor, but he had nuance, you know, to his, his performance. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was, like, you know, he had something there. There was substance. Whereas, you know, Makai Curtis, you know, shout-outs to him, but it's just like, mm, eh. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, just hurry up and meet, you know, Young Ghost and Young Tommy so then, like, we could all really get into the story. Because having rewatched season one of a power, the original power, it basically everything like stems from raising Canaan. So the life that Ghost ended up having for himself 
stems from everything that happened, which will probably happen in the last season of Raising Canaan. So that's the only reason why I'm I'm invested in the show. So, um, but that's my thoughts on Canaan. Jukebox, aka LGBT Juke. Okay. Um, now, kind of like most of the characters on the show, I I wasn't really feeling them, and so I never really enjoyed her character. I just feel like she, it's like. Her and Kanan have the relationship that, you know, family is supposed to have. You know, you want somebody to look out for you. You want somebody to be there for you, you know, when you need them. They have your back and all of that. But I feel like sometimes Jukebox, she she errs on the side of, like, constantly, like, being nosy and being in, in Kanan's business. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I don't like that shit. So it's like when you see Kanan doing his thing, like, let him do his thing. You know what I mean? Like, stop, stop, like, like hovering over his shoulder and being like a helicopter relative, like, you know, let that man have his life, and then you have yours. I think sometimes she means well, and it's for the like the greater good. But at the same time, I don't think like basically she's not the most helpful character. You know, although she means well, sometimes she'd be doing too much. And here's my thing with power. All right, I don't have a problem with diversity and inclusion if it's authentic and if it's genuine and if it serves the story. All right. I, I don't like the fact that Juke is a certain way just for the sake of her being a certain way. Like, I think when she had that little relationship with the white girl, which is problematic in and itself, because they be trying to, you know, sell black men and women on interracial, you know, couples and shit like that, particularly women they target. So I, I get that little, you know, thing between the two of them. But, like, let that be that, you know, her trying to holler at the, the chick in in the little girl group that they got going on i thought that that was corny and i thought it's just like all right you guys are just still selling that that to people that agenda and i'm not rocking with that um i am curious though to see just like kanan how jukebox ended up getting the way that she was you know I, and it's not that she was always like that like jukebox is a type of character that has street smarts but on the flip side she has heart and she has like you know like she's like a good kid you know what i'm saying but somewhere down the line she gets spoiled and i'm just curious as to what that like trauma was specifically that made her like that you know and i think something fucked up really happens to her to make her the way that she is and not to say that fucked up things haven't already happened to her but obviously her mother that like, getting shot wasn't really the thing that pushed her over the edge so again i'm invested in the show just to see what those particular things are you know um but when she snitches on kanan and tells kanan's business to rock it's like yo like you're constantly perpetuating the problem like if he wanted rock to know he would have told her himself and i get she's looking out for him but i don't really feel like kanan is any is in any real danger at least i don't think so but then again you know he is dealing drugs which can get him in jail so i guess she's just looking out for him but um yeah those are my thoughts on jukebox all right so we got next ronnie ronnie mathis uh now you know what's funny everybody thought that and even me for a little bit i thought that ronnie would end up being breeze like i, I think I, like i thought at some point Ronnie was going to be on some shit like, don't call me Ronnie, call me Breeze, or some shit. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think Ronnie is just the antagonist for this season. So it's like, if you notice, every season of Power, there's always some antagonist that pops up that the the main characters have to, you know, hurdle and overcome. And I think Ronnie is just that. So I think Ronnie's probably going to get clipped in the season finale. But I think... He brings an interesting element to the show because when you see a character like that, you wonder what his backstory is. And that's something that, you know, the writers at Power, you know, or the writers, you know, for Power, they do a great job is making you wonder about the character's backstory. And then that always becomes like a topic of discussion amongst people that like the show. Um, but... I don't like how Ronnie ended up killing Unique because, like I said, he was one of my favorite characters on the goddamn show. But I think, again, he's a character of substance because 
although he's a man of very few words, he's not boring. Like, because he's so much different than everybody else. And that makes the that makes the show much more exciting because every time he's on screen, you're basically wondering what's gonna happen next. You know, like, oh shit, you know, what's Ronnie about to get into? You know, what's Ronnie about to do? Um and I like that about, you know, his character and the way that that actor, you know, portrays him. So I would say, yeah, Ronnie, you know, I could say he's one of like my favorite characters on the show because when he comes on screen, I'm actually paying attention. Whereas when it's Lou, I don't really give a shit what he's doing because he's always doing something dumb anyway. But um, but I think Ronnie uh, is a big part in like Kanan's development as a character. So he's the one that actually took Kanan seriously as you know like a business partner and then really kind of fake took him under his wing for a little bit even though Kanan you know is starting to flip on him but um you know Kanan went from being just like a regular corner boy you know small business to finally you know stepping it up and you know Ronnie was basically one of those characters that set him down on that path even though uh 50 Cent never actually mentions Ronnie in the uh, original series of power, I wish he did because then that would have, you know, made it a little bit, you know, better. But um, the character of Ronnie, in my opinion, is is setting, you know, things up for Breeze because Breeze was the one that apparently taught Kanan everything that he knows. So once Ronnie's out of the way in season four, that's when we're, that's when we're gonna get Breeze. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that's my thoughts on that's my thoughts on Ronnie. Drunken Lou. Now, to be honest with you, nothing personal to the actor, or whatever. But I don't enjoy watching him on screen at all. Like he, he always has the same facial expression, like on his face all the time. So when he's happy, he has a straight face. When he's sad, he has the same face. When he's angry, he has the same type of face. And he's just like, like a one-dimensional actor. And I'm, I'm sorry. Like I'm just, I just don't enjoy his performances. Not to say that he's, in fact, like a bad actor. Obviously not, because in order to get on these different shows, you have to have some level of talent. But I just don't enjoy the smug look on his face that he always has. Now, his character is just very problematic. He's an alcoholic. He's a wino. He's a junkie. And, you know, he's fucking it up for everybody else. And... It's getting to a point where I just want like his character to die, you know Sometimes it just gets to a point where it's like the streets need a body and you know Lou Lou needs to go, you know what I'm saying, but I don't think that You know Marvin and rock are gonna kill him because he's family So I don't think they're gonna totally disparage him and just be like yeah We're, we're gonna throw this nigga off a cliff like I want them to but they're not gonna do it so they're gonna stash him in you know, uh, uh, a rehab somewhere for him to clean himself up. But I will say that, you know, what I do like about what they're doing with Lou is that most of these characters, they kill in cold blood and they don't even bat an eye nine times out of ten. You know, most of the time when they kill, they just kill and then there's like really no guilt there. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't really think about the people that they kill at all. Whereas Lou, it's a realistic take on or depiction of the guilt in killing somebody like that shit is going to come back to bother you because ain't no coming back from that shit so when you shoot somebody that's it especially if you shoot someone who isn't deserving or someone who you know like was close to you that's just going to come back to haunt you so i like that we finally have a character in power that you know killed somebody and they're dwelling on it in a way that it's eating them up inside to the point where you know you know self-deleting might be on the table you feel what i'm saying um um but outside of that nuance to like his character arc i don't i don't like him you know because i feel like he portrayed the same type of character in and what is that shit called in snowfall like same type of shit same facial expressions you're, you're you're gonna mess it up for everybody else and then you end up getting clipped or somebody has to you know, do away with you in order for, you know, them to move forward. So that's my thoughts on Luke, man. Detective Howard. Now, shout outs to the great Omar Epps. He's one of my like favorite actors I, used, I watched growing up. So honestly, him being on the show is like 
a huge plus because I think he's a great actor. Now, he is the polar opposite of Lou in a sense that Detective Howard will kill people. He'll, like, yo, Detective Howard is the type of guy that will, like, kill your brother and then walk up to you and cry about him dying and lie to your face. And I've said before in one of my other rants that all these characters do on power is, like, lie and kill people. You know what I'm saying? And have sex. Like, that's all they do. And Detective Howard literally is that. Like, all he does is lie. And he's able to lie in such a way that it's, like, probably, like, he's one of the coldest characters I've ever seen. Because he sat there, and I say she deserved it. I'm not going to lie, because she went barking up the wrong tree, whatever her name is. The, uh, the white girl, you know, the, yeah, whatever that white girl detective's name is. I, I forgot her name. But she went barking up the wrong tree, and she went sniffing around when she was told a hundred times by everybody she knows stop sniffing around leave detective howard alone it's your job but then you're gonna end up in prison in prison for what finding out that howard's dirty you just don't fucking get it shannon howard's not under investigation you are when the hell are you gonna get that through your thick fucking skull Nobody gives a fuck about Howard but you. And that's the fucking problem. And don't fucking yell at me, Dad. I'm trying to help you. All right? And then he ended up sitting in the car with her, getting her to open up, and then he shot her in the face. And again, I feel like she deserved it. You know, she deserved it. Because we told you. Like, we told you stop, like, being nosy. Like, let it go. And she refused to let it go. So honestly, I feel like him being able to kill her and then, like, give a speech talk to the commissioner whatever that guy's name is or what you know what i mean whatever he is talk to her dad talk to you know her girlfriend and all of that i was like yo like that like manipulative like skill came in handy but at the same time it's scary that he's able to lie and kill on that level and that shit don't even bother him at all you know or maybe it does because the way that detective howard like looks in his face and like his attitude towards certain things even though they don't show it, I think that that's part of the subtext of Omar Epps' performance of that character. So I think to live life like that, I think it has to bother you, you know, in some way, shape or form, like subconsciously, you know, because you can't get on like that. Like, that's just part of, you know, human beings and who we are. So it's like if you do things, if you do something wrong, like it's like if you steal. OK, like it's going to bother you that you stole and there's gonna like come a point where like all of that is gonna reach a melting point but i don't think that that's part of his character that's part of Lou's character but that's my thoughts on detective howard famous to be honest with you i think famous is one of the lamest characters in power franchise history i don't like his character i think he's like a pussy i think he's soft i think he's whack i think he's lame and just the fact that like Kane was even hanging out with this dude. To me, it was just like, why are you even hanging out with this guy, bro? Like, honestly, like, he's just lame as fuck, and his music is whack. Um, I really want him to die. I think it would be very satisfying to watch him get shot in the face. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, I want Ronnie to kill him. So it's like, if Ronnie's going to take somebody while he goes down, I hope, like, Famous just catches a straight bullet so he can die. Is this something about this nigga's face that, like, just annoys like the the shit out of me so i you know i just i don't like famous i don't have all that much to say he's just whack as fuck and that's my thoughts on famous um breeze now i'm gonna be brief about breeze because technically we haven't seen him yet um but i think breeze is probably gonna show up at a time where Kanan, Kanan needed somebody like him. So for, you know, Kanan to speak so fondly of him, even though they ended up conspiring to kill him, but he's going to be there to fill a void for Kanan. Because I think it's going to get to a point where Raquel's not around, Marvin is not around, and Breeze is going to be the one who steps in to be that father figure that mentor figure that he never had and I, honestly i think detective howard is probably going to go to jail too so when that happens i think kane is not going to have anyone that's going to be there and then he's probably still going to be involved 
in a drug business in some way, shape, or form, and then that's when, you know, um, Breeze is gonna finally pop up. And then when Breeze pops up, I think Tommy and Ghost are gonna pop up because what they said in the original Power is that they started off as, you know, corner boys, you know, working for Kanan and Breeze. So I think Kanan and Tommy are already gonna be established. I mean, Kanan and Breeze are already gonna be established, and then that's when, you know, um, uh, Tommy and Ghost are gonna pop up, and then I think that's when they're gonna have you know um a certain friendship you know between you know the three of them that starts to that starts to grow and then that's when power is really going to become like the show that it's supposed to become you know once we get them you know um on the show um but yeah so anyway those are my thoughts on all the characters of power book three season three raising canaan and um yeah what are your thoughts please be sure as always to like Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.